Welcome to the Contreras Report. I am Raul Lowry Contreras, your correspondent. Today we will present three areas of events and discussions. The hearings in the United States Congress about what happened on January 6, 2021 are occurring as we speak. One does not have to be a constitutional scholar to have known since the events of that day occurred in the hours of that Washington afternoon to know that the United States of America, as we have known it since 1865, have changed. Our democratic United States of America may have died that day. On the other hand, it might have been saved from a fate of becoming a banana republic Central American style. How? Because a thin blue line, overwhelmed as it was, fought back with little help, some from the Washington DC police and none from the National Guard or United States Army or their commander in chief. Listener, you don't have to take my word for the gravity of what happened that day, nor do you have to look at what happened as an attack on our country. You can listen, watch, and hear loyalist political appointees of President Donald J. Trump during the hearings clearly point out that of the illegality of what President Trump expected them to do on his behalf. On top of the sworn testimony of lawyer after White House lawyer confronted Trump and his loyalists with the illegality and unconstitutionality of what Trump wanted done, these same lawyers advised Vice President Michael Pence that what Trump wanted him to do was wrong, was illegal, and was unconstitutional. Nevertheless, Trump, as late as when he spoke to a crowd on the ellipsis outdoors, it was carried on television, he told the crowd that he hoped Pence would do what was right, what Trump absolutely knew was illegal and unconstitutional. He knew that. This was not a secret. He was told by probably 50 different lawyers in the White House. We know that Trump and Pence spoke on the phone and that Trump blew his cork at the vice president, calling him a wimp and the P word. And if you don't know what the P word is, look for a small cat, you'll get an idea. We know because several eyewitnesses to that conversation, including his daughter, testified that the conversation grew heated at least at the Trump end that they witnessed. What happened during the conversation wasn't illegal in itself, but the content was part of a criminal conspiracy that involved many people, including, for example, Trump himself, and a California lawyer named John Eastwood, and Trump's chief of staff, Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan, who can't remember if he spoke to the president in the morning or the afternoon. What a liar. Anyway, Jordan dreamed up the illegal act the, these men wanted to, uh, Pence to perform. He wanted to set aside election results from several states. He wanted Pence to do that. Can't do that. There were two centers of illegality on January 6th that we have heard much of testimony about. First, the invading Capitol building, the invaded Capitol building, swarming with armed men and women carrying clubs and truncheons, bike racks, pepper and bear sprays, and at least one conviction for bearing, carrying a loaded pistol in a forbidden arms area. And disgustingly, Confederate flags. We should note that the Confederate flag is not illegal in the United States. While it is a crime in Germany to display a Nazi swastika flag. The Trump followers that breached the Capitol turned on an ordinary riot into an insurrection, an attack on the US government. That's what that was. It wasn't just a riot. A, a, a racial riot of blacks protesting the killing of a man by the police. Now, nah, that's normal everyday stuff. This was a once in a lifetime, if ever, occurrence in which thousands of people actively interfered with the processes of government. And despite 
the phony conservatives who claim the 2020 race riots around the country have never been investigated and participants prosecuted, some have. But those 2020 events didn't compare to the 1992 Battle of Los Angeles. Those protesting the January 6th Select House Committee are just lying Trump supporters. The lying Trump supporters. Like historian Victor Davis Hanson, who criticizes this committee because no such committee investigated the 2020 riots and attacks on, quote, iconic federal courthouses. There is no such thing as an iconic federal courthouse. Come on, professor. God, sometimes you are so dumb. Those are diversionary tactics that we're talking about, of uh, setting up a, uh, another committee to investigate black riots in 2020. And criticisms because their boy Trump is being shown to be an outright criminal. The second center of action was the White House itself. The White House where Trump was, he was only there because the Secret Service, which Trump ordered to prepare for a trip to the Capitol building where Trump told his followers he would join them, could not or would not organize Trump's trip to join his protesters. They couldn't guarantee Trump's safety. We now have testimony from Trump-appointed generals, the Trump-appointed Secretary of Defense and Secretary of uh, the Army, all at the Pentagon. We've heard their testimony. To wit, President Trump never called them or their offices and deputies during the insurrection, otherwise known as the coup. The coup is pronounced K-O-O. -O. It's spelled C-O-U-P. Trump people call it the coup. He never, Trump never called the Secretary of Defense, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the Secretary of Homeland Security, or their deputies, or the general in charge of the DC National Guard. The president or anyone from his White House called them. No one, no one. Only one person called them. Only one person called them. His name, Vice President of the United States, Michael Pence. He called them. He called them and he tried to order them to call in the National Guard. He tried to get them to do that without word from the president because the president never did call, never called for the National Guard. Pence called them from an underground loading dock where he was protected from the mob by Secret Service men and women with drawn weapons, pistols, and submachine guns, as well as automatic firing rifles. From security videos, we know that the mob came within 40 feet of the Vice President of the United States, Michael Pence. Considering the mob was chanting, Hang Mike Pence, it doesn't take a fertile imagination to speculate what the Trump mob would have done if they had captured the Vice President. Nor does one have to think how many of the mob would have been killed by Secret Service agents and their submachine guns. We came close. Why? Because the premier liar in all of American presidential history, Donald J. Trump, started lying months before the election that the only way he could lose was if the election was rigged and stolen. On election night, he told America that he had won and that uncounted votes would be against him, so he demanded that vote counting stop because he had won already because he was ahead in several states that were eventually, because of mail ballots, turned. Democrats vote more by mail than Republicans do. But that wasn't always the case. In the 1960 election, Californian Richard Nixon carried the state of California by 250,000 votes over John Fitzgerald Kennedy, but he did not carry the votes that were actually cast on that day. He won the state because of absentee ballots, because in those days, the Republicans, it was a badge of honor for the Republicans to vote by mail. He, Trump, demanded the county stop despite the fact that only a small percentage of votes had been counted. His followers and lawyers filed over 60 cases before state and federal courts, including the United States Supreme Court, and Trump lost every single one, including those heard by Trump-appointed judges. Think about that for a minute. He continues the lie to this day. 
The hearings are showing the American people just what a political and personal cancer Donald J. Trump is. He's destructive. He hates the rule of law. He hates the U.S. Constitution, which I'm sure he has never read. And if he had, he wouldn't understand it. The committee is clearly showing that Trump is not only guilty of ignoring millions of dollars in legal advice from government lawyers, that the scheme to have VP Pence break laws to keep Trump in power was illegal, that was their advice, but he is guilty of attempting to have others commit vote fraud on his behalf in the state of Georgia, an illegal state crime. We not only have the testimony of people on the phone call, but we have a sound tape of that conversation where he tried to get the Georgia Secretary of State to steal the election for him. The House Select January 6th Committee is performing a national service beyond description, absolutely beyond description. There is one star who illuminates the proceedings like no one has in congressional hearings during my lifetime. She is Congresswoman Liz Cheney, Republican of Wyoming. She may lose her seat in November. Nonetheless, she has made her place in American history and grows in stature every time she speaks in the minds of millions of Americans who can only hope she will run for president in 2024. While her stature grows, Donald J. Trump shrinks just like his crowd sizes are every time he goes out into public. His crowds are getting smaller. He continues to lie. He continues to attack Mike Pence while others call him a hero. Others call Mike Pence a hero, even though he was just doing his job. But he told the president of the United States, no. This whole episode is best described by a famous, albeit retired, federal appeals judge, J. Michael Lutig, L-U-T-T-I-G. In his words to the committee the other day, he said, and I quote, Members of the House Select Committee, a stake was driven through the heart of American democracy on January 6, 2021, and our democracy today is on a nice edge. America was at war on that fateful day, but not against a foreign power. She was at war against herself. We Americans were at war with each other over our democracy. January 6th was but the next foreseeable battle in a war that had been raging in America for years. Through that day was the most consequential battle of that war even to date. In fact, January 6th was a separate war unto itself, a war for America's democracy, a war irresponsibly instigated and prosecuted by the former president, his political party, allies, and his supporters. Both wars were raging to this day. A peaceful end to those wars is desperately needed. The war, is our democ the war for our democracy could lead to the peaceful end to the war for America's cultural heart and soul. But if a peaceful end to the war for America's democracy is not achievable, there is little chance for a peaceful end to that war. The settlement of this war over democracy is necessary to the settlement of any war that will ever come to America, whether from shores, her shores, or to other shores. Though disinclined for the moment, as a political matter of fact, only the party that instigated this war over our democracy can bring an end to that war. Like our war from a distant time, these twin wars are testing whether this is this notion, nation or any nation so conceived in liberty can long endure. Lincoln's words. We must hope that January 6th was the final battle, battle of that least the deadly war for America's democracy, unquote. In his appearance before the select committee, conservative Republican Judge Lutig ended his testimony with these powerful words, quote, Donald Trump and his allies and supporters are a clear and present danger to American democracy. They would attempt to overturn that 2024 election in the same way that they attempted to overturn the 2020 election, but succeed in 2024 where they failed in 2020. 
I don't speak these words lightly. I would have never spoken these words ever in my life, except that that's what the former president and his allies are telling us, unquote. Much to think about. We'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you.